Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. Excited to bring this one to you. I'm talking about one of my favorite things to talk about, that 70s hard rock. It's one of my favorite things to collect. Um, I've just been obsessed with it for the past 15 years, uh, collecting rare records from all over the world. So uh, if you like Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, stuff like that, um, and you haven't really gone any deeper, there's a ton of bands like that that were never played on the radio. So through the course of this video, I'm going to show you some of those bands from all over the world, you know, rural USA, Canada, South America, um, Africa, Australia, UK, Spain, um, Greece, all over the place. So I've got a, a lot of really cool, exciting things to show you guys today. Uh, before we get started, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Um, that helps us keep the channel going. Uh, hit that like button and send me some comments. Send me some recommendations of things you think I might not have heard of. And let me know what you think of these. So also, we have a, a record shop in North Carolina called Noble Records. Uh, follow us on Instagram. We're always uh, posting about cool collections that we're getting and uh, recommendations and things like that. So um, I'll get right to it. But uh, like I said, th these these records are some of my favorites in my collection. Um, just through the years, I've just obsessed over uh, over hard rock in general. Um, I, you know, I started off as a kid listening to Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. Pink Floyd, you know, Deep Purple, stuff like that, just being obsessed with it. And as I got older and started collecting records and buying big collections and things like that, I started finding these gems of albums that no one seemed to have ever heard of. So I've done two other videos like this, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll put those, I'll pin a comment to the top with the links of those if you go to the comment section. But uh, one of them was like 10, uh, 10 albums, that 10 rock albums you've never heard of. And the other one was like a part two of that. This one I'm doing 20, and I didn't mention any of these and those. So if you count those two videos and this one, it'll be 40. So a lot of really cool stuff here. Um, and all these that I'm showing you today, I wanted to do this video to where even if you weren't a record collector, you still would be able to stream these or whatever. You can listen to these either on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, things like that. But they're all out there for you to listen to. But even if you don't collect records, it'll be cool stuff for you to hear. But if you do collect records, everything I'm showing today are original pressings. So, very hard to come by. Um, and I've spent years and years and years tracking these things down. So, uh, first first one is a band called Orangutan. Um, they originally formed in the UK under the name Hunter. Um, they got kind of some strange management. Uh, the guy that was managing them... Uh, brought them in the studio, just paid for a little bit of studio time. They threw this album down in one afternoon. Uh, he didn't like the name Hunter, so he changed the name to Orangutan, designed this artwork, and released it only in the USA without telling the band. So without their permission, without their knowledge, they got no money from it or anything. Now, I do think that they've been paid for some of the reissues that have come out, so buy your reissue uh, to support that band. But, um, yeah, it's just a band that so many others like it just thrown together they toured around they played some amazing songs they recorded an album and then went back to work doing other things so uh, a lot of really good hard rock on this killer guitars uh, it's just a really gnarly brutal record i mean that image first time i saw it i was like that's for me and the music on it does not disappoint this is an original uh white label promo a beautiful copy of this that I'm thrilled to have. So that is 1971 Orangutan. Second one here is Parish Hall 1970. This is some seminal hard rock here. Um, and, and a lot of these, if you watch my videos, you might have heard me mention these before. Um, these are some of my favorite things to talk about. So some of these I've mentioned recently, some of them I haven't talked about in a while. But this has been reissued. You can listen to it anywhere. The 1970 uh, Bay Area, California. Really killer blues rock. Uh, you know, when you listen to all these hard rock records, you realize how influential Hendrix... I mean, obviously we know Hendrix was influential, but, um, you know, his marks are all over this thing. You know, very Hendrix-influenced hard rock record from California. Um, a lot of times people will think it's a Christian, like a gospel record or something, just because it kind of looks like it's got a church on the front, and this dude looks like, you know, maybe... Uh, <laughs> So, but it's not. It's really amazing. Really hard rock. Don't let the cover fool you. It's 
it's outstanding. So check that one out, Parish Hall 1970. I'm not spending too much time on each one because I want to show you a bunch of them. I'll leave it to you to search these out and listen to them because I have thousands of these records. These are the ones I wanted to pick that you guys have got to hear. Uh, this next one is called War Pig. Uh, it came out in 1972 in Canada. Um, just incredible hard rock. Um, I, I've referred to them as the Canadian Black Sabbath. Just extraordinary stuff. Uh, you know, hard rock bands, popular ones, would come through the area in Ontario and they would open for all of them, you know, and they hung with the best, man. They put on a killer show. Um, it got picked up a couple other times, like one once by London Records. They put out a later, like a second press of this, and it's got a totally different cover. It's like a white cover. And um, that one's pretty cool, too. This is an original Canadian pressing with the original cover. This is uh, insanely, insanely rare. But, yeah, you're going to want to check this out if you like that hard rock sound. It's, it's, it's off the charts. This next one's called Irish Coffee. Uh, 1971. Incredible... Uh, hard rock band from Belgium. Uh, they toured around for, for a lot of years in Belgium. They did great, made incredible live performances, um, opened up for a lot of great guys, you know. And, and you'll see in this video, 1971 was one heck of a year for hard rock. Uh, but they, they kind of toured the circuit there in Belgium. This was only ever released in Belgium, so it's really hard to get. This is an original press on Triangle Records. Um, but they toured, they were doing great. And then their keyboard player, after a gig one night, was driving home and died in like this horrific car accident. And they just decided they wouldn't, they didn't want to carry on without him. But uh, this is just mind blowing stuff. Incredible. This is one of my favorites in my collection. And no joke, um, this is incredible. I was very lucky to find this because it is a very rare record. But they've they've been reissued recently. Um, I think this year Guerson reissued that record so you can find it on vinyl you can stream it just about anywhere i believe um this next one i talk about this pretty regularly on my channel but it's i try to think about this offshoot of 70s rock that a lot of people don't think about and that's zam rock it's rock from zambia if you watch my channel i'll talk about it i've lately have been talking about it a good bit but this was kind of the gateway drug for me for rock from zambia this is uh, lazy bones by a band called witch which is an acronym that stands for we intend to cause havoc this is an original press, which is one of the rarest records in my collection. Maybe one of the most top top in the top three most valuable records I have. Uh, really hard to find. This is a really clean copy, um, even though you see the corners are a little bit worn. These almost don't exist in clean condition. So, um, but this has been reissued. You can stream it anywhere. But really unique rock sound uh, from Zambia. Um, you know, Zambia at that time. This was 1975. So. They were getting records imported into Zambia uh, from the UK. A lot of people were uh, mining copper in Zambia at that time. And so you had people that were coming in to, from the UK to mine copper and records that were coming in from the UK. So they were, they were familiar with the UK sound, the hard rock sound. Um, and they were hearing things like the Beatles and the Stones and stuff. And a lot of these guys were incredible musicians. And they started garage bands and, and things like that back then you know and most of that stuff was never recorded and then once they get up into the the early and mid 70s uh they were being recorded albums were being put out incredible stuff there is about 70 really good zambian uh zamrock records uh this is probably a lot of people say this is the best one as far as like a you know a incredible record with great songs this is the one man it's really really good uh, this is different than everything on the list but i needed to throw it in there because it is some hard rock that you've got to get into zambian witch lazy bones next one is uh Puba from 1972 uh hailing from youngstown ohio uh just absolute mind-blowing hard rock look at this guy he's just trying to make it to the toilet Poor, poor fella. Um, he's got his checkered pants on. You know he's been partying. Just trying to get to that John. Um, this is an original U.S. press. Beautiful copy. Um, but this is just mind-blowing hard rock. Primal screams. Savage guitar riffing. Amazing stuff. And the great thing about this band is that they're still touring. They're still playing. Uh, they're still at it. They made three really killer records um, in the 70s. I've got all of them. Mind-blowing stuff. 
Um, but they still rock today and tour around the uh, Ohio area. And, and they actually recently reissued this. Um, this is uh, autographed by the guitar player and singer Jim Gathaston, Gustafson. Um, he's a really good guy. He's active on social media and stuff. I talked to him here and there a good bit. Uh, but yeah, he, he they reissued this on Ripple Records. I think you could probably still get these. Uh, but yeah, check this band out. Really good, and it's awesome that they're still doing it. You know, a lot of these bands they broke up and they didn't do anything after that. But but those those guys are still going. They made some great records since then, and it's just it's cool to just you could tell that they're in it just because they love it. You know, and they love performing, they love making music. So the next one is an exception. It's not 70s. It's night. There's two exceptions on this list that aren't 70s. I bet they're close enough. 1969, it's an album called Andromeda. Uh, it is incredible UK. Um, it's, it's more on the psychedelic side. Uh, it's folky, psychedelic, fuzz rock guitar. It's got its folk moments, but it's got its fuzz guitar moments that'll blow your mind. This is an incredible record. It's original UK press, beautiful condition. Uh, this is one that took me forever to find. I love it so much, but really killer UK hard rock psych. Amazing. This one, man, I know. See, I, I keep saying, and people get on me about saying, you always say this is your favorite, one of your favorite records. I've got a lot of some of my favorite records. This is, uh, this is definitely one of them. By the way, we got mugs on our website. Uh, the link's in the, in the description of this video. You can grab a mug or a t-shirt. Hats are coming soon. But Zipper. From 1975, this one blows my mind. Um, front man Fred Cole, uh, I'm obsessed with him. If you watch my videos, you hear me talk about him. Um, he, what I really love about him is that he started playing in like garage bands and stuff in the 60s. He was in a band called Lollipop Shop, which is a psychedelic album is amazing. I definitely recommend you checking that out if you're a psych. Um, this is more on the hard rock side. It's Led Zeppelin meets the Stooges. It is in your face, hot and heavy, crazy guitar, spirited vocals. It's just, I mean, solos for days. It, it is that era. Only 500 copies of these were made. Um, and just really tough to find. But, uh, Fred Cole went on to be a popular, um, mainstay in some grunge bands and stuff he was in a band called the rats he was in dead moon uh really fantastic stuff um in the portland oregon area but man zipper it's just one of my favorites man it's just i gotta say it i gotta i gotta keep saying because these are some of my favorites this is virus thoughts 1971 uh the name of the band is virus the name of the album is thoughts um this is their second record the first one's really good this one is even better uh, this is like more on the side if you like Pink Floyd, if you like Deep Purple, it's kind of like a Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd and Deep Purple had a baby. Hard Rock, um, it's a little bit more polished. Some of this stuff is really raw that I'm telling you, and, and that's why they didn't really make it. They, didn't, they weren't really made for radio. This is not the case. This is more on the polished um, Hard Rock side. It's Kraut Rock. You'll hear me talk about Kraut Rock. That's pretty much just, you know... Uh, a pr have rock that has a, a progressive rock leaning in Germany, uh, but yeah, this is a, one of the quintessential kraut rock records. Amazing on Pills Records. This is an original press. It's been reissued. You can stream it. Highly recommend this if you like Pink Floyd and Deep Purple and stuff like that. Uh, it is a lot. It's it's very much in that vein. This next one is Kavas Jute from Australia, 1971. Just incredible record through and through. It's uh, hard rock, but it's very very free flowing. Got some great melodies. Um, it's a really phenomenal record. They uh, supported Bo Diddley back in the day. They toured with him and opened for him a, a bit. Um, but this is one that is a lot of people say their favorite hard rock record. I've heard that time and time again. It is up there. It's amazing. I absolutely love this record. Um, I'm, I'm trying to put all the the titles under here so if you can't uh, understand what I'm saying you could at least look it up but absolutely phenomenal record uh, Kavis Jute this next one is called Toppy Men uh, this is from 1972 from Spain um, it was autographed I believe by the lead singer so it's an original press uh, beautiful copy 
But, uh, yeah, it's incredible. Almost sounds like it could have come from the UK, uh, but it's got that heavy Hendrix influence to it. Really good guitar work. Very good record, man. I mean, it's got, it's got like, it almost sounds like South American rock meets UK rock. Uh, really good. The cover, just let the cover do the talking. I know that there is an album rip of this on YouTube, and then their uh, second record is uh, on, it, it, you can stream their second record, which has a similar feel to it. Uh, but yeah, Toppy Men is a really, really killer hard rock record from Spain. Love this record, man. Next one, man. I look for this record forever. Uh, it's called Truth and Janie, 1976 from Iowa. Uh, it's a power trio. Um, a lot of these records, the thing that hooked me was the uh, album cover. This album cover looks like it will be a modern metal album cover, um, but it's from 76. Incredible. You've got this Marshall stack uh, with this just hand reaching up out of the grave. It's just... He died, but he's not ready yet. He's wanting to rock. He's still wanting to, you know, melt people's faces. Uh, Truth and Janie is just incredible. Um, there is a very specific um, style of 70s hard rock uh, that has, like, uh, Hendrix used this Univibe pedal. Um, it's incredible. You hear it uh, all through and through. Uh, his performance at Woodstock, especially the national anthem, um, he kind of pioneered that that pedal, uh, and it's been used on records here and there in the popular, you know, in popular rock. But like, I, you know, most thing I can think of most is uh, is Pearl Jam Ten. Um, it's used a good bit. But anyways, um, but this the Univibe pedal has a very Hendrix feel to it. Um, and, and I've talked about JPT Scareband in, in a past video that I did this top 10 things. Uh, JPT Scareband is one of them that uses it. Uh, but it's very specific feel to it, but it's just raw. No, I know, I know I'm always talking about the uh, Univibe pedal in all my videos. Why don't I just show you what I mean by the Univibe pedal? I'm pulling out my guitar and stuff. Give me a second. So I apologize in advance for my crude guitar tone. I pulled my pedal board out of storage, hadn't used it in a while. But this is just like a regular distortion tone. I've got like uh, a muff pedal and another distortion pedal going. So. so this is like the Univibe pedal. You hear the waves coming in? Nasty, uh, high energy, in your face, incredible hard rock. That there's some truth of Janie has some live records that are just out of this world. Uh, I think you know their live records are actually better. But this is called Truth and Janie, No Rest for the Wicked, and it is mind blowing stuff. It's got that raw um, Univibe, just wild acid soaked guitar. Um, and while I'm on that subject, we're going to the only other exception that's not 70s. Uh, this is Mistreater, Hell's Fire from 1981. Uh, another one, man, this one is more on like the metal side almost, but it's not metal, but it is, uh, it is mind blowing and it's got that Univibe sound to it. Uh, I really highly recommend this one. This one is just one of those, you put it on and you just, you, your face just does this like, oh, it's nasty. It's so good. Um, insane guitar work on it. Really, really good uh, vocals as well. But it's definitely that um, that work up to things like, you know, that hard and heavy uh, Metallica. Not really thrash, but you know what I'm talking about. Like uh, mid to late '80s metal, but it still has that uh, those the fingerprints of the early '70s hard rock on it. But this is just an incredible, mind blowing record that. I would highly recommend. Next one is Night Sun Morning. Uh, this is an original press on Zebra Records. Uh, this is 1972 German record. This is a lot of more on the heavy end. 
Um, this is mind blowing stuff. This is an extremely, extremely hard record to find. Took me forever to find one. Uh, there is a 73 reissue in Canada that's a little bit easier to get. But this is just, look at that inner sleeve that's on that. Just look at it. Uh, beautiful, beautiful record. But if you like the Black Sabbath sound, this is just a lot heavier than some of the other things. Um, if you like that heavy rock, you know, again, I, I feel redundant in saying killer guitar. But it all is. All this stuff is just... I'm a guitar player, and I love stuff like this when I was a kid. I love the guitar solos. Uh, you know, the distortion, just... Um, and with popular rock, you know, there is uh, a little bit more restraint. Um, they don't let the lead guitar jump out and just take over. But these records, they do. And I love that. <laughs> so, Night, Sun, Morning is just an incredible, very heavy, beautiful record. Um... You can't stream that anywhere, but YouTube has a full album rip, so you can check it out there, but I would highly recommend it. I tried to pick albums that you could listen to places. A couple of them, you can only listen to them on YouTube, um, but I still wanted to throw them in because you can't hear them. So. This next one is Socrates, Drink the Conium, uh, On the Wings. This is incredible, 1973, hard rock from Greece. Um, this is a phenomenal record. If you're look, this is an original press. If you're looking for original pressings of this, uh, they're not as expensive as the rest of these. Uh, you could probably get one of these for a hundred bucks or so. So, um, but these, are, this is just an incredible record. Very much Hendrix influenced, uh, just like the rest of this stuff uh, is. But this one's definitely got that blues rock, Hendrixy hard rock feel to it. But this is just one of my favorite uh, hard rock records. It's so killer. Um, they're difficult to find, but they're not as expensive when you do find them. So that one, Socrates Drank the Conium, is the full name of the band. A lot of people just call them Socrates. But it's called On the Wings, 1973 from Greece. It's a killer. Uh, this is one that even among uh, hard rock and kraut rock collectors, I don't hear much about. Uh, this is Gila. Uh, came out in 1971 in Germany. Uh, Connie Vett is the guitar player, and he was in Popol Vuh. Guru Guru, a lot of the, um, you know, stables in, in Kraut Rock, if you're familiar with those. This is an original pressing, but this is one kind of experimental, wild, out there guitar work. But, man, this is a phenomenal record. I, I love this record. This is this is truly one of my favorites. Um, it's findable. You know, I don't know that it's being reissued, but I know you can listen to it online. I, I feel like it has been reissued, but uh, just incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, it's just one you you throw on and just take the trip, man. It's it's uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. Definitely a little bit more on the progressive side, uh, the kraut rock side, but it is uh, it is a mind blower. Definitely check out Gila if you haven't before. I uh, got another kraut rock one here. This is 1973. The band is called Message. The album is called From Books and Dreams. Um, what uh, you know, This is another one. What initially attracted me to it was that cover. I mean, look at that. Uh, from the 70s, just beautiful stuff. But it is a kraut rock record as well. Um, again, a little bit more on the progressive side. This one reminds me a lot of, uh, of that virus thoughts in the way that it has a little bit more of a Pink Floyd, Deep Purple feel to it. But this is an absolutely fantastic record. The cover does not mislead the sound. I mean, it sounds like the cover, man. And it is an absolute smoker. Uh, you've got to check out a Message if you haven't heard. They've got a couple really good records. That's that's my favorite um, of theirs. Uh, the next one, this one really changed my life uh, when I found this record. This is a band called uh, Dias de Blues. Um, that cover, just look at it. It's just amazing. This is from Uruguay. Um... There was another band called Opus Alpha. Um, same band, those members from there kind of formed a different band called Dia's Day Blues. I found this record probably 10 years ago and just couldn't believe uh, I'd heard about it and looked around and asked everybody and nobody knew what I was talking about. Um, and then finally tracked down somebody in Uruguay that had a copy and they were able to send it to me. But this is, a, this is only 200 of these were ever made. Um, really rare, but uh, they have reissued it, and I think you can stream it somewhere. Um, but yeah, Dia's Day Blues, it's definitely got that hard rock. It's got a South American flavor to it, but it definitely has that Hendrix feel as well. It is it is a really, really solid blues rock record. Uh, Argentina had some um, really good, or well, South America in general had some really good 
um, hard rock records that were blues rock. Um, I, I thought about putting it in this video, but I feel like I talk about it a lot on my channel, but there's another band called Popo's Blues. They had like a ton of records, like 10 or 15 records, something like that. Um, but Popo was just a pioneer. Anyways, but South American blues rock is just a whole nother vein. Incredible stuff. I may do a video in the future of South American hard rock stuff that you guys might be able to look forward to. Hit that subscribe button just so you don't miss it. Turn on your post notifications. A couple more here. Uh, the Wizards from Kansas, uh, 1970. It's country rock. Uh, it, it's it's a country psychedelic. Um, you know, this is one tremendous psychedelic record, you know. Um, I have buddies that call this the best psychedelic record ever made. I've heard that a few times. Uh, it is phenomenal. They're from Kansas, as the title says. Uh, but yeah, really, really good psychedelic record. If you're not, if you're not really gotten into the psychedelic vein, this is a really good place to start. Uh, again, great guitar work, stuff like that. But this is an incredible, incredible record, Wizards from Kansas. I wanted to throw that in. And the last one is, man, this is a ripper. Uh, it's called Oz Nas. Um, it's from Houston, Texas, 1975. Um, this one is absolutely no restraint. Blow the roof off. Crank it to 11. Uh, smoldering guitar licks. Just in your face. like Literally, just no, no restraint whatsoever. Just over the top nuts but it's from houston texas it's got that texas hard rock charm uh the cover doesn't you know doesn't disappoint it's really you know soundboard but they have some there's been some live recordings that have been released and reissued um in the, in the recent years that are actually really good as well uh but this is just absolutely incredible this has been reissued i feel like you can listen to this anywhere but this is one do not sleep on it is a killer killer hard rock record oz and oz from houston texas hope you guys enjoy this video uh if you did hit the subscribe button if you didn't hit the subscribe button anyways i might make a better one who knows uh, but follow us on instagram buy some merch off our website and thank you guys so much for all your support and watching the videos we will see you next time